the last time Forbes magazine computed the net worth of BTS, they said BTS is worth 25 million. Many of you are wondering whether BTS is only worth 25 million and how Forbes magazine actually computes the net worth of BTS and other celebrities and billionaires. It's very simple. They actually call the person <laughs> whose net worth they want to know and they just go and ask. So they go, hey, RM, this is Forbes magazine. Just want to know how much you're worth. <laughs> God forbid they call sugar, that knucklehead's probably gonna go, I'm worth a hundred million of none of your business. <laughs> okay, so how do I know Forbes actually do it that way? Because they said so. <laughs> you can make this shit up. But there's more to the story, of course. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I was half joking in the intro, but only half because Forbes actually uses different methodologies to determine someone's net worth. And one of them is actually calling the person whose net worth they want to find out. And then they ask that person. Okay, but before that, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button. I would really appreciate it. And share the video if you can. Please, it really, really helps. Okay, uh, let's get to the video. Let's uh, determine and discuss the methodologies Forbes uses in determining the net worth of BTS and other celebrities for that matter. Methodologies. Number one, they ask. They actually try to personally meet or interview the person whose net worth they are trying to measure in person, on the phone, or via a video call. A lot of wealthy people are willing to provide their own net worth. Of course, with that, there are often exaggerations. They either go above or lower. Some people want to appear wealthier than they really are and use that to position themselves higher and attract more business or investments. Some people want to appear less wealthy for security reasons or to avoid unreasonable scrutiny and other reasons. Some won't even want to talk about it. Forbes also talks to people in the company, employees, handlers, asset managers, financial advisors, rivals, peers, attorneys. For BTS, Forbes will attempt to contact companies BTS has worked with that would tell them officially or unofficially how much they pay BTS. For example, they will find a contact in Tiffany & Co. Calvin Klein and other brands BTS has worked with to ask how much they paid BTS. They could ask people within Big Hit as well or other industry insiders and others. Now, the chances of BTS or anyone from Big Hit or companies they work with telling Forbes exactly how much BTS is getting paid is slim to none, primarily because there are contracts and the contracts usually include a confidentiality clause. Note that other celebrities float their fees some other ways. Some are bloated, of course, in order to increase their market value. Forbes, like any other media company, will try to get those info officially or unofficially. Media companies do have internal informants and they spend a lot of years and a lot of money building that network. Industry Standard Way they could guesstimate. When you work in the industry long enough, you will get a good idea on how much celebrity endorsements are actually worth. Jennifer Aniston's Emirates deal was worth $5 million. Taylor Swift was paid $26 million by Coca-Cola. Selena Gomez was paid $10 million to help coach rebrand and Pantene paid her $3 million back in 2015. Forbes will estimate BTS's fee by determining how popular they are compared to all those artists and how big is the company they are endorsing and the kind of activities they are committed to do. Concert gross income, that's a little easier. They rely on reports by Billboard and Box Score. However, according to Box Score themselves, they base their estimates on reports submitted by venues or promoters or agencies. Income from streaming are computed based on payout rates and the number of streams. So again, they don't really get the exact numbers. They get reports or from research or by estimating. Public asset evaluation. For people whose wealth is mostly in public companies, it's really easy to determine the value of their assets since companies actually disclose the number of shares owned by executives and large shareholders. But not everything gets disclosed. Private Asset Value Estimation BTS members and other celebrities, if they are smart, probably have privately held assets like real estate, 
market investments, and others. That requires special investigation, according to Forbes. Net worth researchers look at the holdings that such people own, either from public sources or from the person himself or from informants. And they attempt to value each of those assets based on comparative asset values. For example, Korean media reported that Jungkook bought a property two years ago. They will verify the ownership and compare that to similar properties in the same area. They then sum up the value of those assets to determine a total net worth number. Other sources used to estimate values of private businesses or assets include court documents, purchase or sales documents, publicly recorded deeds, and contracts. Expert Opinions and Informants There are a lot of legal ways a person can invest, own properties, and grow their wealth without being tracked. BTS for one is notoriously private. Forbes can use specialized experts or informants. There are many people who study or have connections with people that idols deal with. For example, someone may know of a fund manager or a business manager that help idols manage or grow their wealth. Those experts and informants can generally give information that may be combined with publicly available information or asset value estimates to determine a net worth. These methods leave a lot of room for error. Many idols will most likely not want to reveal their net worth to avoid excessive scrutiny for security or simply because it's none of anyone's business or others. Even if Forbes manages to find an informant who has some knowledge about BTS's contract terms or how much they are paid, unless they are the ones actually taking care of Big Hit's books, they won't know the exact number. I won't be surprised if the idols themselves don't know their exact net worth. Over or underreporting, there are agencies who will overreport their groups or idols' earnings as APR play. Concert ticket sales, for example, are highly questionable. <laughs> I have been given a generous number of free tickets to several concerts that have been reported sold out. To think I'm not even a big channel. Same thing is true with endorsement deals. Agencies can float a bigger number to increase the market value of their idols. According to Forbes, greater weight is often given to what the agency or person reports as their net worth. Underestimate in asset valuation, some idols may be investing in private assets that are not trackable or Forbes really simply don't know about. Now, if they have a lot of that, a lot of private unknown assets, then, then Forbes will end up running in a deficit, meaning there's a difference in the actual between the actual investment of the idol and their estimates because they're missing a lot of many different investments or assets. Next is fund managers. So there's this is very common. If you a lot of people would actually just put their money in a fund and then the fund manager will actually pool different sources of funds. So Jane Smith may have 500,000, John Smith may have 250,000, I have may have 750,000 and then he will pull that and then he will invest that as a bulk. So then it's essentially impossible for for me or for anybody or for the investor to know specifically where his money went you know that he, you just know that it's in a fund and that and the portfolio of that fund will be a certain way but you don't know specifically where your money is and sometimes they do it intentionally because because nobody can track specifically where their money is going there has been no precedent. BTS is probably one of the hardest celebrities whose fee is hardest to guesstimate because there has been no precedent. No other celebrity has treaded their path and has a fan base as massive and as loyal as ARMY in this day and age. This could further add to the wrong estimates. It's a little easier to guesstimate the fee of Jennifer Aniston, Beyonce, Harry Styles, Adele, and others because there have been stars like them before. Revenue distribution. Given that what Forbes is computing is net worth, the assumption is that they are computing what is distributed to the idols minus taxes, cuts, and commissions. The only time revenue distribution between the agency and the talent has been revealed was when three members of DBSK sued SM Entertainment. 
after that revenue distribution and contract terms have been airtight. Forbes needs to rely on informants or guesstimations. Revenue from concerts, for example, is a third-party data. You have inaccurate revenue combined with inaccurate estimates of revenue distribution and you have an inaccurate report. Again, Forbes spends a lot of time and effort in making sure their contacts are reliable, but they can only be as reliable as the weakest link in an agency's team. Merch sales. Management companies come out with a lot of merchandise, some more than others. Again, the only way Forbes will get the final number is by getting it from the agency. And we are back to the previous issue. Revenue distribution and final sales numbers are often unknown. Things to note. Singer's biggest sources of income would be concerts and endorsements. They can earn a lot from physical album sales, but as we know, only K-pop artists get a lot of physical sales. Taylor Swift withheld her sixth studio album Reputation from streaming for one whole week, forcing her fans to buy the physical album. Streaming is really negligible, so I still support buying CDs for your favorite artists. When you are a multi-millionaire, you have business, finance, or fund managers. When you get to a certain level of wealth, it is very impractical for you to keep your wealth in cash. Cash is the worst investment because of inflation. Your $100 today won't be able to buy the same things 10 years from now. Many of these idols that have a net worth of millions are most likely using fund managers or finance managers or business managers. These managers are the ones who invest their money for them. They could also be utilizing private and public pension funds or retirement funds. They could also be investing in businesses. Many artists actually earn more from non-music related things. Beyonce is supposed to be worth $800 million, but her husband Jay-Z, I don't even know when was the last time he went on tour, is worth $1.7 billion. That's because Jay-Z is an entrepreneur, and a big one at that. Actually, that applies even to athletes. Michael Jordan made more money from Nike in one year than he did in his entire 15-year playing career. Roger Federer made 84% of his income from endorsements. LeBron James made 61% of his earnings from endorsements. So this is why HYBE is actually expanding outside of music. They're doing IP, gaming, technology, merchandising, because they know that there are much more lucrative sources of income outside of music. So it's for the company itself and, of course, the artist. So the idea is to build the brand of the idol and then around it, build a sustainable business because the artist's career, an artist's career, not just idol, but any artist's career has a shelf life, but a brand can transcend generation. Okay, I make personal quick computations in my head for no other purpose and reason but my personal pleasure and curiosity. So I usually undervalue things, but I based it on experience, on what I've seen, what I know what people have told me, usually 30% is how much an artist would take home from the gross income. So if a tour, for example, is the revenue is 15 million, then I would take 30% of that, which is 15 million. And that would be the take home of the take home pay of the artist. So if it is a group, then I divide it amongst the members of the group. I remember actually Eminem talking about this, but I can't find the interview anymore. He said he was surprised when he realized that he would just take home only 30% of the total revenue. But he also realized that if he doesn't, you know, taxes, people that needs commission, could need commission and stuff, then he won't have a career. So it's like, it is what it is. Um, but if I find the interview, I'm going to share it with anybody, everybody. Now, another thing is that 30% is the standard. But what BTS did uh, doing a residency instead of actually touring, they did SoFi and Allegiant, is actually more cost effective. So they probably took home more. Because um, they don't travel, you know, they, you don't need security, you know, logistics and stuff. They saved a lot of money on that. Now, the individual activities that they are doing... Uh, oh, the other thing is that I don't know the contract of BTS. Maybe maybe it's a fixed amount that they're getting paid and not 
a uh, share of the revenue. I, I'm not sure. So as I've said, that's just a personal competition that I do just for me. Now, this individual activities that they are doing, they really are making bank. <laughs> like Jim and Jungkook are making bank. Uh, Cal Calvin Klein and Tiffany and Co campaigns are actually real global campaigns. So there, that's a lot of money that they that they're really making. You can also do your own math. Like according to Circle Chart, they've sold 30 million albums. So if you say like the average album cost is 20 dollars, then multiply that to 30 million. And then 30% of that would be their take-home pay. Now, I, I'm, as I've said, this is not an exact computation, especially when it comes to distribution of CD sales and streaming, but that's the quick, quickest that you can go. And it's not really to determine their exact net worth. It's just to determine, ha, just like have an idea how much they're earning. So remember that no one really knows how much they are earning, maybe except for their tax preparer. I won't be surprised if them themselves know, don't know how much they're worth. It's really very complicated. So whenever you see like all of these lists about Forbes wealthiest and you know this uh, earned this much um, amount, this tour earned this much amount, remember there's a lot of agencies so actually overvalue they float a higher number for PR, for marketing or whatever. So take all of those things with a grain of salt. Those are meant to be guides and not really to give you an exact amount or exact number. Okay, I hope that helps. If you have any other question or comments or suggestions, leave them in the comment section below. Just please be respectful. You can also get in touch with me in any of the social media links that you see on your screen right now. And of course, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification button. And also share the video if you can. I would really appreciate it. I appreciate you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting my videos. Thank you. I am really, really very grateful.